Hey, check up. Let's play some D. Welcome. Episode 39. Time to play some D with, uh, yeah. It's Coach D in the house. Yeah, and, um, good stuff this week. Good stuff. I definitely, definitely could have swung over time. There's a lot of topics that I wanted to jump into this week. Uh, there's, there's some things that may carry over to to next week. I, I really wanted to, for whatever reason, I guess just because it's sports related, I wanted to get NBA All-Star Reserves and that, I mean, the All-Star Starters, that'll be announced on Thursday. So... Yeah, I don't. I just didn't think it was totally necessary. I kind of want to talk about just the different guys and things of that nature. Maybe I'll save it for next week, or maybe I'll just save it for when the rosters or the All Star reserves everybody's announced. Then I'll just maybe put it all into a quarter. But that is one thing I really, really wanted to do. But it was beat out by four much, much, much better topics. Definitely be talking about. Uh, so Supreme Court Justice Stephen Byer, Byer, Bayer, however you say it, his recognition and the possible replacements for him as he's been getting calls to step down. And today he has, or yeah, today he has announced, I believe it was today, or yesterday, I'm sure they, we got the news today. It was probably yesterday or days before that he let everybody know, you know how that goes with the news released. I'll talk about the, the Baseball Hall of Fame. It, I think it was, I really, really wanted to talk about, probably be brief, but I want to talk about Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and baseball is just weird without with not letting them in. So I'll talk about that in second quarter. Talk about Ozark season four, part one, and the Incredible, possibly, game of the year. The Chiefs and Bills this past Sunday had a incredible game that ended somewhat unfortunately. So, that is Face MD this week. Once again, as always, if you don't mind, you hit the like button, you know, hit the subscribe button, post a comment, let me know how you feeling, you know what I'm saying, even if it ain't about the video, it could be about something else, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um... Notifications. I don't know if I said that. The notifications are important because when these videos drop, you get that noty, noty gang. And yeah, I'm ready to. I'm ready to tip this off. I, I was anticipating doing this one, and I kind of just got a quick minute in the busy day to knock this joint out. So let, let's tip it off. Let's 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 get let's get the ball. Get the ball rolling. Obviously, can't do it without that. You know, nothing pops up without those quarters over there, you know. One through four, first quarter, is that um, that incredible game. The Chiefs and Bills. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen put on a show. Not only them, a lot of people talk about their, you know, but it was receiver, you know, Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, Gabriel Davis, there was more than just the quarterback. Some receivers made some 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 big plays. The defenses showed up. I mean, it was 14-14 to have, but the defenses made some some big plays. Some there were some some timely sacks. The the Chiefs not making a field goal at the end of the first half. I thought was the biggest. I, I just kind of had a feeling that, that would come back to 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 bite them. Because that would have those thirteen seconds would have been to win the game on a on another field goal. So I I talked about field goals a while back. I think episode twenty six or something like that. I just put up a short about them. Um, it didn't really put up the whole gist how I feel about field goals, but I hate field goals especially to to win the game. That would have had the Chiefs made the field goal at the end of the half. The field goal at the end of the game would have won the game. For the Chiefs in all four games would have been ended on field goals. And even with overtime, if overtime would have Chiefs 
whatever, turnovers and downs, Bills, turnover and downs, whatever. One of those teams was then going to kick a field goal. Field goal was going to end the game had the Chiefs not – had the Chiefs not made the the touchdown, not scored the touchdown, I believe that 90% chance that game goes – ends on the field goal. So I'm glad it didn't. But talk about overtime later. The the final 13 seconds, a lot of people say 13 seconds. It really wasn't 13 seconds. Uh, they got down the field in about eleven, in about nine seconds. I believe they kicked that field goal with four seconds to go, if not three. I don't exactly remember. It might have been three seconds when, when Kelsey got up and hit the, hit the timeout signal. But nine, ten seconds is really what it took to get down the field, which is just essentially crazy. Teams Teams plan to lose games. Yeah, teams playing to to not to lose the game is just the wrong way to go. I think you play every you should play every snap, every down to to win the game. I think you gotta you gotta show some aggression, you gotta show some kind of wittiness, and not just I hope that a mistake is made. I hope that they don't complete that pass. I hope that the receiver doesn't get down. It's more so applying pressure and and and, and putting your skilled players out there to make a play. If if if. If you make the mistake of letting Tyreek Hill get get behind you, or whatever the case may be, if you let that beat you, then you're just dumb. But but you just can't let easy completions to to professional athletes and they they run and and there's there's no resistance on on those on those end of half end of game plays and you just hope that they're going to miss the field goal or hope that they're going to incomplete or hope they'll just have to do a Hail Mary which then could be a pass interference or those athletic cats Kelsey's tall Tyree can jump really high or vice versa on the other side we've seen Hail Mary catches happen too I think you should just make it as difficult as possible and you play to you should play always play to win the game and I thought the Bills Thought they had the game won and they just figured it was no way. But I just think it now for for most people that watch sports and foot whatever, sports in general, there's almost in every instance, if there's if there's a chance, if there's a point zero 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 whatever chance to win, it, it could happen. And I think it should always be in sports nowadays, even even if it only happens once every however hundred games. It could happen to you, and I just don't think anybody really wants that to happen to them, and, and, and it happened to the Bills. So, But overall, the game was good. Two quarterbacks played well. I'm not a believer in Josh Allen. I think he's solid. I think I think you can win a Super Bowl with him right now in his current state because he runs the ball so well. I think the, the running quarterbacks are, are really, really good in, in, in their youth, but it, it you, you kind of start to, to, to deteriorate. You don't want to take those hits and things of that nature. So, ice passing will probably get better. It has gotten better, but I think he's still inconsistent, and and I think his inconsistency inconsistency could lose you a game, a, a important game in the playoffs. That's that's just what I think. I just don't I don't see him playing, uh, two, three, right, four, four consistent games. But maybe we'll get a chance to see that. Uh, some people are saying Manning and Brady is Mahomes and Josh Allen. I think that's disrespectful. But uh, Mahomes is, is Mahomes. He's probably arguably going to go down better. The quarterback quarterback play, he'll, talent-wise, he's probably better than Peyton and Brady, and they both would probably say that. And... Um, Maybe they was say that about Josh Allen, but statistically, I mean, Pat's already got a Super Bowl. Allen doesn't, and Allen hasn't, you know. But great game, and then just a transition into into OT. I think this is the one that fixes it. I think the NFL has to make some kind of overtime decision about how they want these games to end, and it can't be on a coin toss when when defenses are so handicapped. They're either going to have to allow the more physicality on defense, because as I've always said, the receivers, it was even a play here, and was it this game? Yeah, Diggs on Ward, and um, Diggs was shoving Ward, and if it was vice versa, there would have been a, a defensive pass interference. 
but it wasn't offensive pass interference. You, you can't touch the receiver, but the receivers can do a good amount of pushing and things of that nature and, and, and get and get um shoves and push offs and get 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 open. They they either have to allow the defensive specifically the defensive secondary cornerbacks specifically in certain routes and touching and so forth and so on to allow that to be more physical or they have to change these overtime rules. It it, it has to be because because at that point in the game the defense is tired in in the NFL in the playoffs, Kansas City is cold, Green Bay is cold, whoever, whatever, Buffalo, New England is cold. That creates various physical issues that scientifically we can break down another time, but you're three hours into a game, running up and down the field, it's hard. The defense is pretty much at a one of the least resistance moments in the game, especially in overtime. So you have to give both teams at least a shot at the ball. I think it should be some iteration of college rules where they get the ball at some part of the field and or maybe you get it at the 20 or the 15 you get four downs something of that nature i know the nfl has an issue with you play longer you get injured make it four downs each team you don't kick a field goal that if you if you score a touchdown you do not kick a field goal you have to go for two the games will be over and i i would bet the average time of game play is probably 10 minutes to watch time, 15, 20 max, they'll be over. You, you're not going to consistently keep scoring two-point conversion. If you do, it's super captivating. And and maybe that's wrong too, but I think you would have to see that. I just don't see two-point conversions being converted over and over and over and over and over again. Just my opinion. I think the defenses will get stopped, especially if you do it. What I think is like the 50 or the, or the 40 – 50 to, or 35, one or the other. And, um, yeah, I think that would be be the, be the way, the best way to do it. Each team gets the ball and 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 you go go from there in some stores. But maybe they keep the sudden death. You score a touchdown. You just got to play better defense over time. I think it's silly. I think it's a sucky way for this game to end. But Josh gets the ball. I personally believe – that he does score. I just think the chances are way less likely that that they were going to punch it in. As I knew Patrick Mahomes, they were super hot and just just moved the ball down the field super easily. I just didn't think Josh Allen would get the ball back, and and, and he didn't. But at one point, report uh, fifty two million people were watching at one point in that game. NFL's got you locked in. They you know. They they have they got the, they got everybody locked in. You gotta. I just think you gotta find a better way to 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 finish it off when 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 that situation happens. That that would really be bad in the Super Bowl if it was a huge game like that and the other guy didn't get the ball because of a coin toss. But not much that hasn't been said that I'm just reiterating. But hate field goals and I hate field goals in under two minutes. In the fourth quarter, specifically, I hate field goals in general, but in under two minutes, I think you should have to score. And um, it's just me. But heck of a game. Heck of a game. And the second quarter is the Baseball Hall of Fame. So only one person... Got in, David Ortiz. But shout out to him. He got seventy nine. Sorry, seventy seven point nine percent putting him in over the seventy five percent threshold. But this is really, really about Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling and Sammy Sosa. Uh, Sammy Sosa. This is their tenth. 10 years on the ballot, which their eligibility has run out. Barry Bonds got 66%. Clemens got 62.2. Kurt got 58.6. There's other people on here. Billy Wagner, 
Andrew Jones, Gary Sheffield, Alex Rodriguez, which they may do him the, the, the same way. But really all I wanted to really say is that they Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. It, it's baseball made their beds. They have to sleep in it. Baseball literally allowed this to go on. They, they they did. Whether they're going to admit it or not, they're not going to say their sport is is washed, but but it really is. Baseball allowed this to happen through, I don't know, a couple of decades, I, I, I believe. Barry Bonds, the, he's, he's, he's the home run. He is the home run king. I mean, he, he is the home run king, and, and Clemens is, is arguably one of the best pitchers ever, and for them to hold – the records they have, the awards they have, and not be reflected in the Hall of Fame, and that goes forever. When if the record books stay intact, hundreds and hundreds of years from now, where none of us are here, people will say this guy hit all of these home runs, but he cheated in an era where everybody was cheating, or m- most people most of the players were cheating i i don't i don't know I, it'll be it'll be confusing i think i think baseball will be looked at more uh, they'll be looked at as more of a joke because they knew what was going on allowed it to go on and then after they cleaned it up a bit they'll say no you can't be in this reunion of people david ortiz is 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 good but he ain't no barry bonds david ortiz isn't mark mcguire mark's not in i think mark's eligibility is out almost positive it is nobody else made it in as hard as the pitchers go but I mean, Roger Clemens makes nothing but sense. I mean, nobody has seen a really seen a pitcher like that guy. I mean, there's been some solid pitchers. I can't say that, but he's. I mean, he was a a beast. Six Cy Youngs, seven times Cy Young Award winner. Um, yeah, Sosa's here. And then also I don't get the whole I don't get the whole threshold thing. Because like I guess I guess it's kinda okay because in certain years you kinda restrict your Hall of Fame to being very, very delicate or special or whatever you want to call it. Because in, in this this year you only get one guy in. So you keep it you do keep it at a level where you know only the best of the best get in where it's not every year you put three guys in and you know as I my example 100 years from now we got thousands and thousands of people in the Hall of Fame. I do think there is some kind of like cool aspect to having um a a small amount or a smaller amount or keeping it as close knit as possible. I do think that is cool but That threshold just seems a little strange. You gotta do numbers and but but it is a bunch of people like on this this results thing, it's a bunch of people. Ryan Howard's down there, Mark Teher's down there, Bobby Abreu, Andy Pettit, Manny Ramirez, Jeff Kent. Looks like Jeff Kent won't get in. Gary Sheffield's probably not gonna get in. Todd Helton. Scott Rowland, he'll probably get in. He's on his fifth year on the ballot. David Ortiz is his first one. I think he got just got shot, too. I, I feel like that had a lot to do with him getting in, too. I think he was almost killed uh, not too long ago. So I think the sentimental aspect, not saying he's not deserving. I do think he is deserving. But I thought of this of all years, it kind of struck me like, well, if David gets in, you got to put Barry in. And I, I guess – People figured if Barry got in, Roger and Kirk would get in. But 
is just a and and it's 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 by the it's by the writers. Um I think that's also sh- sh- strange. Is that Baseball's Writers Association of America guys that don't play the sport. And I won't speak on any other ones, but any sport that does this is is just absurd. People that don't play the sport, the Writers Association get to to say who gets in. I, to me, to me personally, I've always said baseball is a boring sport. I think it's a joke. I think people that sit in in the dugout, if you sit in the dugout for a whole game and you eat sunflower seeds and pile them up and make weird things, or sit in the outfield singing, listening to music, dancing around, I think any sport where you where you just can be that empty for three hours or whatever. I just think it's a complete and utter joke. I'll always say that. I think it's quite uh, dumb. You know, two players basically engage each, each, each out for sure, or each, I don't know what you want to call it, match, play. It's probably a play. You got a pitcher. You got, oh, I'm sorry, the catcher's involved. Three players. The pitcher, there's a batter, and there's a catcher, and uh, a referee designates a lot of it as well. Interesting concept. I think it held the test of time and and was cool back in the day, but now, but com- com- as competitive as sports are, I think it's just average at best but I, but personally I think it's a joke and the writers inducting got into the hall of fame just kind of yeah but yeah Barry Bond should be in Clement should be in Kurt either way have time baby moving on through I'm chug a lugging along for 39. 39 is chugging, chugging, chugging. So, so big news. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Bear uh, to retire. Probably another time, another day, or maybe not. I think they'll they'll get their nominee through, but I'm sure the Republicans will do what they need to do to try to stop things from happening, just like Democrats try to stop Trump from getting his through. But th- this is just good. This was good. That this was good that he he stepped down. I think the Ruth Ruth probably should have did the same. And just because it's just considerate, and it's 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 really no point. I, I just don't think it's eighty four year old man should not be on. The Supreme Court. That's just my opinion. I think it's it, you gotta cut these people off at some point. It just gets it, it just not. It's not an accurate representation of uh, of our country. So with that being said, I appreciate the guy got up out of there. And this is no Democrat or Republican type of deal. It, when re, you know we play in a two team game right now. So when your team's on and you look like you're at that age, I think you should jump out while your team's ahead so they can replace you, you know, to keep, you know, keep your team in, in the running. I just think that's just the way to go as long as we are in this two-party um, H-hole, H-E-double-L-L hockey sticks hole of, of, of um, political parties. Two, having two choices is awful. I plan to talk about that. It might be a whole. It might be a whole play some D. I may shut all the quarters down, and we're gonna play. Uh, who knows? What's a one trick pony? Because the political party system is is more of a joke than baseball. So Biden promises to nominate a woman to the su- Supreme Court. 
the likely candidate is Kintanji Brown Jackson. Youth and educational background could be determining factors. And obviously, you don't want them to be controversial. Controversial can cause some issues, especially Republicans play the controversy angles a lot better than, than the Democrats do. So Biden nominated uh, Jackson, his likely replacement, to the U.S. Court of Appeals for um, D.C. last year. And the move that was seen as paving the way for her eventually session to the Supreme Court. So he 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 he's locked in on her. Uh, she's she's young, fifty one. She remain you know she remain in the courts for decades. In my opinion, she's fifty one. She should probably go to she's about. She really should be on there maybe two decades. Really shouldn't be two decades. You really should be done about seventy. You really should be done like 65. You should be done at retirement age. You should not be able to serve on the Supreme Court after our quote-unquote retirement age. So she should really have about like 14 of them things. But Jackson also benefits from the president's already having vetted her for the D.C. role. Boom, 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 boom. Three Republican senators, Graham, Collins, Murkowski, Vote to, to to confirm her, so so they feel like she's a she's a a slam, boom slam, let me slam dunk. Uh, this, the the other one is is Justice Leandra Kruger. This one intrigues me a little bit more, and it's not because she's California Supreme Court. She's been on there since 2014. Jay Brown. Uh, appointed her her youth she's 45 I think she's that 45 sounds good as I said in my opinion you go to 65 get 20 years on there and you know Clarence Thomas joined at 43 when in in 91 um, she was um she was acting deputy solicitor general for a Barack, Barack Obama's administration was will probably carry over uh, and I think those are the two the two leading leading ladies there, and then there is a third, which is Judge J. Michelle Childs. She serves as a judge on the U.S. Uh, District Court, South Carolina. Poorly favored for the position by by James Clyburn, who helped Biden get elected in South Carolina. That's kind of what started his nomination. So his his. Pat on the back, I helped you, you helped me type of things. We'll have her in the running. Ch Child's nom nomination also bring a different type of diversity to court, given that she received all her degrees from public universities, unlike the nine justices sitting on there, degrees from Harvard or Yale. And uh, Amy received hers from Notre Dame. Uh, oh, actually, there's some other names. Uh, Judge Junis Lee and Judge Candace Jackson uh, Kwumi are some other choices. So it's cool that it's cool that Biden wants a woman on there, black woman. Time is now. I, mean, I guess that totally, totally makes sense to me. I wish it just didn't go like that i just didn't wish everything didn't go based on what looks or sounds good i, I just want to get the best people on there with the best experience preferably young young 40s would be would be nice they would have some time to evolve and 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 learn and help out and i just think you put the right people in not the people that that, that make the they give you the the loudest clap in the room. That's just just my opinion. Whether it's and in this in these cases where it's only so many Supreme Court justices, white male, black man, black woman, white woman, Asian, Latin, who whatever. I just think the best person, the best person right now should go, and not the ones that um, you know 
deserve to fill the spot because politics. But it's politics, so what am I talking about? You know, what am I talking about? It's politics. All right, foes up. Foes up. We know how we like to end these babies. About to end it with some um, with some juice, with some fun, with the good stuff, with the hot stuff. And I got the hot stuff, baby, this evening. Hot stuff, baby, tonight. And it's Ozark, season four, part one. There's really no introduction I need to do here. If one is watching, one has watched four seasons of what I would call premium television. Very, very good show. It probably will go down as one of the top shows of all time with only four seasons. But this one's but the this fourth season will have fourteen episodes, which should be fourteen fourteen uh, I didn't say bangers, but a bigger a bigger ending makes it cooler than they, they two parted it up. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was entertaining. It kept me kept me on. I didn't totally binge it. I basically watched two and a half well, I watched one, waited, watched about one and a half. So I got the three and a half. And then I watched three and a half through seven. So I kind of binged the last f- three episodes, which I don't think really counts. But I did finish them up in a couple of days It over that whole grand, grand scheme of things. But couple things I love Ruth I actually would have never even kept watching the show if it wasn't for Ruth I thought thought she was superb through the beginning seasons uh, she tapered off a bit this season but it was relatively expected given what happened at the end of season three with Ben and her love for Ben and then she picks it up they crank her right back up there at um as as the as the first half of the season ends they crank they crank her up rightfully so as always Ozark is one of those the, the best the best with the show that I love shows that that the whack the whack the characters I mean I just think I think when you got good TV I think it's totally fine just to whack the characters I personally do not like seeing the same people over and over again I know it's a whole money and you know keeping people on and the industry is that you want to keep characters on because, you know, they make a living off the show. I get that whole part. So it's a mixture with me, but just the television watcher in me, the, the, the character evolution, I like to see new characters, new faces. And we did get a new character and a new face that I did not like. I did not like Javi. I did not like the new enemy at all. I thought he was forced, although necessary. Unfortunately, I just didn't like the character. I didn't buy him as Omar's nephew. I mean, I guess in in our families these days, nephews can be older than you, <laughs> right? So it does look like his nephew was closer to his brother, like they were super close in age. But then he treated him like he was a baby. Clearly he wasn't. He was quite ruthless and crazy, and Navarro never – nipped him in the bud, but that's the whole point of the show to let Wendy and and Marty do their thing. Their their wizard wizardry, that's a part of the show. So I get that. But I just didn't like Javi's character and their 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 straightforward approach with it. It was nothing manipulative or or swaying about it, which in a way I appreciate that too, because that's cool when Everything isn't a mystery or you're trying to figure things out. He was pretty much brute, brute force, forward, you know, W key, forward analog, and you, you're gaming, folks. Straight at you. He was coming coming forward the whole whole episode. And, and as it cleans up near the end, the whole FBI situation with Omar wanting out like that. I thought that was a little bit forced, but cool, made for an entertaining show. And then at the end, 
Javi taking on a deal to be somewhat invincible to obviously manipulate them five years from now. He's not going to play ball with the FBI. He's just going to use it as immunity for five years where he could run them up, which a guy like him, the end, the ending of part one capitalized on his character because now he's this invincible super drug lord, basically. And, um, the FBI angle was just off. My Maya Miller, the HBI agent they dealt with, I thought that whole writing of that was off, weird. But she made her play, made her call, and that turned out to be cool. How they got to where they got was rather bumpy. Nice speed bumps and could be confusing when you put out logistically. Logistics, you do it, you know. By the book, like oh, this doesn't make sense. It makes sense, but as a TV show, it was super entertaining, and and just just fun to watch. It's a it's a nice ride to watch, and they just smoothed you in with part two. They don't leave you dangling too much. At least me personally, I felt like it was a good closure to part one to 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 to, to brew up the stew, to get the stew stirring, get it get it simmering real good. Then you know, part two, I they'll just they'll crank that dial up and they'll probably be boiling boiling the whole time. But but I just love Ozark for their ways of not, you know, they give their characters their due and then they send them out on their merry merry ways. But overall, I enjoyed it. Definitely definitely enjoyed it. Just a uh, Good show with really good acting. I know I, my biggest notice was that Charlotte was super out of place. They gave Jonah his character that arc. They gave him his, but they never gave Charlotte anything. So I'm, I imagine she'll she'll turn it up and make some moves, and they'll give her some 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 power. How if she does a heal or or if she just um bust through the door maybe with Jonah or whatever but I, it feels like Marty and and Wendy won out and what they have introduced their kids to they can't specifically get them out Jonah likes to launder money Charlotte has the gears rolling with with the inner workings of things so they they introduced them to a world that they're young and they may you know, f feel the thrill. So we'll see how it goes. They're good characters. Everybody's good characters. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite parts, and I said it a thousand times throughout the, through watching it, is why? Why? Like, it's not white. It's white. Like, white. Like, what? Just hilarious. Love Ruth. Great character. Great actress. She's won awards. I'm almost... 100% sure. But, yeah. Ozark. Season 4, part 1. Banger. And, uh, this was a banger. This was episode 39. Chin banging. That's what it is. This one is a, is a chin banger. Chin 39 is a chin banger on the mic. Episode 39, play some D. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you don't mind, that like button. Hit that sub button. Notifications, leave a comment. Talk about that Ozark. Talk about whatever you like. Specifically to, to the YouTube video. Uh, Yeah, Chiefs and Bills game was a, was, a, was a big one. I said, I heard the number was at 1.52 million people was watching that game. Uh, baseball Hall of Fame. They just said no to, to two of their most historic players of all time. Weird. Very, very weird. Supreme Court justice will be replaced by Joe Biden, and it'll probably be a black woman. So we'll see how, how that process goes. And anybody waiting for have watched Ozark season four? The part one of it, it's good. It's good. Look forward to the to the second half. With that being said, stay healthy. 
be cool, do all that good, good, good stuff to make you feel good in your soul. Don't work too hard. Work smart. Do your thing until the bell rang. I don't know why I said that. That's like an old thing from high school. Weird, weird, weird. But uh, yeah, it's Coach D. I'm signing out, as always, until the next one. I holla.